David Muir has an exclusive interview with the president. He's in Havana with the latest. Good morning, David. Good morning, Robin, from Havana. And yes, history made here in Cuba. President Obama touching down here, the first president since Calvin Coolidge in 1928 to visit Cuba. But as you point out, this visit does not come without controversy. I asked President Obama about a visit to Cuba a little more than a year ago. He said, let's wait and see. But overnight here, explaining to me why the time is right. The president and first lady and their daughters coming off Air Force One in Havana, Cuba. For decades, an image unimaginable. And just a short time after touching down, our interview with the president. Mr. Good president, we meet in Cuba. How about that? How about that? You know, as you're well aware, when we spoke last time, a little more than a year ago, yeah. I asked if you'd be visiting Cuba right. before the end of your presidency. Right. And you said, let's see how things evolve. Right. So why now? The time is right. Uh, obviously, our intention has always been to get a ball rolling, knowing that change wasn't going to happen overnight. But what we have already seen is the reopening of the embassy. And although we still have significant differences around human rights uh, and individual liberties inside of Cuba, we felt that coming now would maximize our ability to prompt more change. But you've often said when you visit countries around the world that they put a fresh cone of paint up, they spruce yeah. the place up. Absolutely. Is, is there any concern that Cuba is doing that here? What are you looking for for proof that there's been progress? I think that there's no doubt that uh, the Cuban government is still uh, a one-party state that is exerting control and is stifling dissent. But the president argues he's already seeing Cuban entrepreneurs blossom. You hear from a lot of American businesses, though, who say if we don't lift this embargo, yeah. other countries are going to get in there yeah. and get the deals. Well, there's no doubt that we still have some work to do, and part of that is bringing an end to the embargo that uh, isn't currently in place. Does that happen during your presidency? It may not happen between now and then, particularly since we're in an election year, but it is inevitable. When you look out across Havana, yeah. you see the young people all gathered on street corners to borrow the Wi-Fi. <laughs> I mean, fewer than 5% of the homes right. here in Cuba have access to the Internet. Right. Well, that's part of why uh, some of these changes can be so significant. And one of the things that we'll be announcing here is, is that Google has a deal. Uh, to start setting up more Wi-Fi access and broadband access on the island. How quickly, though, that, does that change a country when you go from 5% Internet access in, in people's homes yeah. to suddenly having access to the, the World Wide Web? Well, you know, change is going to happen here, uh, and I think that uh, Raul Castro understands that. President Obama telling me there that change is coming to Cuba and adding that Raul Castro knows that. In fact, President Obama will meet behind closed doors today with President Castro. And I asked him uh, if he'll be honest, blunt uh, with President Castro, and he said he will. He'll be talking about human rights here in Cuba and about the freedoms for ordinary Cubans here. Robin? We're looking forward to that. But you referred to him meeting with Raul Castro later today. He did not greet the Cuban president, did not greet President Obama at the airport. And many critics are making note of that, David. That's right, Robin. It's making global headlines. There were a number of dignitaries waiting to welcome the first family, President Obama, when he landed here in Havana. But Raul Castro was not among them. Uh, many here in Cuba believe that's because of the delicate dance being played out. President Castro obviously wants to uh, remain firm with his grip on this island nation, while at the same time, the Cuban people welcoming the first family with open arms. Robin. Delicate indeed. David, thank you so much. And we're going to have more of your exclusive interview in our next hour and, of course, on World News Tonight. Thanks. World News Tonight anchor David Muir is in Havana with all of that. Good morning to you, David. Amy, good morning. As you know, Fidel Castro defied U.S. presidents for nearly a half century. At one point, the two nations on the brink of nuclear war. We've talked to so many Cubans in the streets here, one man telling me, without Castro, Cuba is nothing. Even the younger generation, when I asked two young women, are they looking forward to the possibility of new freedoms here? They told me they are happy with what they have, and they, too, are honoring their leader. Walk down the streets of Cuba this morning, and you can sense it, a country in mourning. The streets nearly empty, the flags at half-staff, and the music that you typically hear in the streets here, silent. A country dealing with the loss of their longtime leader, Fidel Castro, who died late Friday night. ¿Qué piensas sobre un Cuba sin Castro? 
Roy tells us he's proud of his leader, but that Fidel Castro has already been gone for a long time. More than 200 miles away in Miami, Florida, the mood for many is very different. Cuban exiles flooding the streets over the weekend, celebrating, waving the flag high and dancing. They say this is the end of an oppressive regime. And Fidel Castro, every bit as controversial among American leaders. President Obama, who recently renewed diplomatic ties with Cuba, offering a hand of friendship, saying in a statement, we offer condolences to Fidel Castro's family, adding that history will record and judge the enormous impact of this singular figure. But Republicans are criticizing the president for not acknowledging Castro's record of human rights abuses. President-elect Trump striking a similar tone, calling Castro a, quote, brutal dictator, whose legacy is one of firing squads, theft, unimaginable suffering, poverty, and the denial of fundamental human rights. Mr. Trump saying his administration will do all it can to ensure prosperity and liberty for the Cubans. We talked with American tourists here, this group from Texas, asking what the future with the U.S. should look like. What are your hopes for the Cuban people now? I hope that we can continue to have good relations with Cuba, because I think that's what the people have educated to us that they want. They are expecting a mass gathering here in Havana today at La Plaza de la Revolución, where Castro would famously address the Cuban people for hours at a time. And when we ask the Cubans here in the streets what they think about the future between Cuba and U.S. after the thaw in relations they've witnessed in the last couple of years, they say much of that now depends on what they hear from President-elect Trump, George. It is in his hands now, David. Thanks very much.